Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, welcome to the AGI Media R Ring Lecture. Uh, my name is Alexander Schachinger, and my job is pretty plainly explained. I help the German healthcare system to understand the digital world. It may be very important uh, for you as non-medical people to explain what is the healthcare system. And um, those are my uh, customers. I think besides AOK, Allgemeine Ortskrankenkasse, or other uh, Balmer health insurances, you, I assume you don't know very much of these companies. So the German healthcare system exists of those companies who pay the healthcare, the pills, the doctors, the surgeries, the operations, the physical therapists, the hospitals, the health insurances. They get all the money from you when you work, your parents when they work. And the pharma companies, the health, uh, the health uh, hosp the hospitals, the doctors, the pills, the surgeries, the wheelchairs, the nurses, the physical therapists are paid by the money from the health insurance, right? That's the German healthcare system. And it is very important to know that it's a regulated market. That means you cannot say, I have a pill, health insurance, give me money for the pill, it's cool. It's extremely ethical, medical, scientific tested before you get money as, as somebody who has a new pill. Nobody can buy on eBay or Amazon a heart surgery that would be ethical and a little bit crazy. Of course, the health community, the ethical health community doctors as protected area uh, do the heart surgery after the doctor diagnosed you. So, so compared to the media market, the consumer goods, the fast moving consumer goods, Coca-Cola, Snickers, BMW, uh, Borda, Bild Zeitung, it's a regulated market. And this is very, very, very important to know because social media, internet, connected chronic patients, connected skin cancer patients online, exchanging information, what pill, what doctor, what surgery is best, they are independent. And then you already know that two worlds clash together. And I will try to show you these, these examples in the next 20, 30 minutes. Uh, of course, I will give you a media and theory background because you are students in the media science. And to understand the dynamics of millions of patients online, you have to put these millions of healthcare servers or e-patients online, you have to put in the micro-sociology or media usage theory, right? We talk about this uh, in very simple pictures in the next 20, 30 minutes. So the first chapter is, I think, pretty much familiar to you. The new normal of the digital society. Everybody's online, everybody got internet connections in your pocket. I don't have to explain that to you because the average, average age of you is in your mid-20s, 20 to 30. I mostly talk to people who could be your mothers and fathers and he would decide billions of euros in the healthcare system, mm, right? And um, chapter two is pretty interesting because these two worlds are colliding. It's like hot lava coming into water, right? And then I try to show you some possible convergence and synergies of these two worlds. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the so-called German uh, economy magazine Wirtschaftswoche said how Apple and Google is changing the healthcare system. And if you show this cover to a doctor or a, a somebody working at the health insurance, he says, what the heck is going on? No, never. Forget it. And analyzing the e-health, the web-based health services like personal health record or Gesundheitsakte or electronic health record, things like that, Germany is pretty behind out of different reasons. And usually in Europe, the smaller countries are very innovative. But this is just an example that the media always sees that these two worlds are colliding. Um, so media economy and health economy newspapers and magazines already have this topic on the agenda. And let's get back to the background. And this background is pretty much familiar for you because this is the everyday life um, you're living. This is the digital society. 
And uh, if there are special healthcare rules in Germany, for example, a pharma company is not allowed to make advertising for medication because, or for, for uh, medicaments, for pills, because you get these pills from your doctor when you are sick, diagnosed sick. You can't buy Google or look for asthma sprays if you're not sick. You can buy it at Rossmann or supermarket or Starbucks. But online patients, they are free. So these rules don't, don't apply to these patients and to these people. And that means things with uh, chronic patients and, and what doc who, which doctor is best, which medication is best, these rules don't apply in the digital world. So talking about the patient's market online, this is the patient's market online. Right. There, are no there are no borders of, of, of countries and no borders of law. So it's the whole digital society is also the, the patient healthcare market, so to say. Um, sorry for the, the German words here, but um, I try to explain the very important dynamics of the digital society. Who knows Clay Shirky, Manuel Castells, Jocha Benkler? Some of you? Manuel Castells, Jocha Benkler, Clay Shirky, here comes everybody. Kluge Manifesto. Blue Chain Manifesto, I think I will give you a list to read if you want, because those authors describe the impact of the digital evolution of countries, people, markets, economies in a very, very good uh, words and very good papers. I want to give you some small examples. Sick people 50 years ago, your grandmothers, when they were sick, diabetes, asthma patients, problems in the hip or the back, walking like this, yeah? or Morbus Bechterev, Morbus Parkinson, walking like this. Yeah? They helped each other maybe in the next door, in the next village, 100 meters away or one kilometer away. So same patients exchanged in so-called so self-help groups, self groups in the local vicinity, in the physical local vicinity, the next village, the next city, right? Even if they have a car, or the doctor only. So you can see a transformation of physical communities into digital communities. That is not very new for you. 30 years ago, uh, 40 years ago, your parents flirted in dance clubs or Sunday afternoon dance clubs in Mainz, Wiesbaden, for example, whatever. Now you do Tinder, friend scout, the flirting, whatever. Same happens to patients. When I have a rare disease, like say skin in my uh, cancer in my stomach, I want to know who else has this experience. And same people with the same problems and same needs, same questions, same language meet online. Patients like me, phenomenal. So that means the digital society can connect similar people very fast, anytime, any place. This dynamic, I think you know already, but that had very much impact on dynamics. Greenpeace videos with a bleeding ape finger against Nestle. I think you know this case. Who knows this case? A bit better, okay. So independent groups can fight against uh, companies, brands, laws, bad companies, whatever. This dynamic is very important to know. And you know this uh, wisdom of the cross, Weisheit der Massen, wisdom of the cross dynamic of this guy called James Suryaki. He, called, he, he wrote a book, Wisdom of the Cross, very important. Wikipedia, everybody knows Wikipedia, has the same quality of Encyclopedia Britannica. A book of the 19th century, 20th century, a publishing house in London, publishing a book for many pounds you can buy. Same quality on Wikipedia. Why? If it's an open platform, many people put stuff together deliberately, it has the same quality. Now imagine a pharma company saying, this pill helps very much for asthma. And then 10,000 asthma patients, wisdom of the crowds, say, no, there's another medication helping better than the old medication. 10,000 asthma patients have feedback of the real world saying this asthma product is better. So what is the health ministry, the health insurance, the pharma company, and the laws are doing? 
of this dynamic? No answer on that. Nobody knows. That is a nice example of these two worlds clashing together. If it's a car or magazine or Coca-Cola uh, product or Starbucks versus Bysac, the one company loses market share, the other one gains. But in the healthcare system, hmm. Yeah? So here you see the dynamic of the digital society versus regulated markets. Very important. Our car, Beringer, Pfizer, Bayer, very unsexy, boring markets. But old versus new, disruption, crackling, interesting. Yeah? Um, I think you know these, these examples where uh, uh, copyright law is uh, attacked by these digital dynamics. This is just funny here, a nice uh, example already, let's say, eight years ago. Eight years ago, you, you, where you are in school, I think. Uh, this is uh, the increase of upload, download, smartphone, smartphone upload, download rates while a Madonna concert in uh, Rome. And then you see also the social needs, the social drivers, the social gratifications, why people use smartphones. When you have Madonna music fans on a concert, they upload, download pictures, uh, short videos, and so on. You do, you do this every day. And they don't care if some universal company copyright is broken. They just do it. Right? So a nice sentence from this guy called Jochai Benkler. He's a digital law guy at MIT. Big book, The Wealth of Networks. Great book. He said, summing it up, the Internet allowed social non-market behavior small talk of asthma patients next on the street, to move from the periphery, from outside, from the unimportance, into the core of a global economy. So when just, if one regulation, if one regulation ministry sees, a hey, dear Mr. Pharma company, your asthma product is from 5,000 people bad rated on the internet, we have an issue right now. Because we are the health insurance, don't give you any more 100 euros per package. You go back on the table and judge again if it's really good, right? Bang. Oops. And uh, I think the most unsexiest thing in Germany is uh, healthcare brochures from your health insurance, lying somewhere on the table with dust on it, or health brochures in the rating room of the doctor, of the doctor room. And now we're back on media theory. This is the so-called hypodermic needle model saying some doctors, some medical journalists writing brochures, how you behave good, public health, how you behave good to stay healthy, slim, and um, don't get um, cancer, diabetes, whatever. But it's so boring and it doesn't work. And on the Internet, you see that people coming together, talking their own stuff, in their relevance, so these models don't work anymore. Yeah. You know it better than me, I guess. Those apps drive now versus car to go, um, Tinder versus um, flirting, whatever app um, around me versus uh, location based service, whatever. Mm, four square. Those apps which has the best usability, you guys use. And my most thing is to understand doctors, hospital, pharma, and healthcare companies that user and use case centricity use the digital rules the digital world. Again, user and use case centricity rules the digital world. What does that mean? User centricity, if you make a brochure for 5,000 asthma patients and you don't hit their relevance, it's a dust, it's nothing, it's, it's rubbish. And if you give content to them that is relevant for, for them, how to handle a breathing problem in the subway, then you get them because it's a need for them. And if you make a medical journalist text uh, five meters long on their tablet, it's boring. If you make short videos how to behave, open your breath, stand straight, inhale, move your arms, and your breathing problem relaxes in a short video, you got them. But these dynamics, health companies doesn't know because they focus on the doctor and on the medicine. See? 
clash again. Mm. This is a funny example uh, where Wikipedia meets the medical science community. This is 3,000 people, a funny example, also happens in Germany. This is 3,000 people giving feedback what works best on acid reflux, in German, Sodbrennen. Yeah, pregnant people, alcoholics, whatever. Um, who laughs has, is, is pregnant or what? Yeah? Uh, just kidding. So you see substances, Wirkstoffe, medications, but also conservative therapies like don't eat so fat, move your ass a bit, or sleep with um, pillows because then the stomach stuff stays by physical forces in your stomach. And if you give this to the reg regular majors, to the policies who say this medication can come in and this not, another problem. Yeah? New insights. And doctors, if, if, you, if I show this to doctors and say, Mr. Schachinger, this is bullshit, this is charlatanerie, this is crap. It's just crazy young people put clicking on bullshit buttons. Average age on these forums, guess, 30, 50, or 70. 30? 50, 70, the middle, 60. 60 is right. 60 years. Average, average age. Gauss curve, 60 years. Um, another great thing um, of digital society dynamics, I think you all guys know already a bit, chance favors the connected mind. Nice, sexy saying from a guy called Steve Johnson saying, innovation doesn't come from old people with glasses and white colors in the cellar of biosharing pharma in Wedding, researching 20 years on a substance. Heureka, I found the, um, the law of uh, the law of Wait. Hmm? Um, usually, normally, innovation happens chaotic, dynamic, exchange with heterogeneous people of all kinds of uh, disciplines. So Steve Johnson said, "We know something. Sometimes this uh, one guy with glasses and beard uh, is doing research in the cellar, and then innovation comes. But the reality is that uh, Einstein needed 20 years for his innovation." and his um, E gleich MC square insights. And the reality is that these chaotic people in bars and coffee houses of the 18th, 19th century have exchanged, and then innovation happens and increases and becomes better and improves. One idea hits the other idea, getting better at than one simple, single idea, and so on and so on. Same with healthcare online. Imagine an app where wheelchair people, right? give feedback on which uh, subway station has elevators or, 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 or on a Google map. That is crowdsourced healthcare. That is wisdom of the crowds. That's cool. Yeah? Instead of one guy looking where is an elevator for wheelchair people. And this dynamic is very interesting also digitally. Offline in the 19th century in the woods, difficult, right? All these examples show that the regulated conservative healthcare system, with all its benefits, everybody gets healthcare, everybody gets a surgery, everybody gets a therapy when he's sick, made the 19th century, can't compete anymore with these uh, speedboard innovations of digital world. Most relevant and successful uh, patient apps come from patients themselves who know HTML and not from your health insurance. Whoa. Flash again. So talking about media markets, talking about, uh, in your words, um, talking about digital markets, talking about media markets, what is the healthcare market? The healthcare market is in Germany, for example, on the demand side, about 40 million Germans using the internet for healthcare stuff. If I have a spot on my nose that teases me from in my next date this evening, or if my father has lung cancer dying in four months, this is all healthcare surface. About 40 million, eight out of 10 onlineers use the internet for healthcare stuff. Forums, apotheken, umschau.de, you name it. Supply side is about 12 to 16,000 healthcare websites and apps 
So if you go to Google Play or iTunes, you enter AOK or DRK or lung cancer, you have some apps. Okay. And those regulating people, those healthcare companies, those pharma companies, those doctors, those hospitals, they don't know this, uh, this landscape. They don't know this landscape, this dynamic. Mm. Uh, we did for the fourth time online surveys, simply asking patients on these healthcare websites, hey, what disease do you have? How old are you? What do you use on Google? What types do you enter when you have diabetes? What words do you enter? On what websites do you surf? And what's the impact, science perspective, media impact, media usage impact? What's your impact on your knowledge, your attitude, or your behavior on your medication, your pill, using asthma sprays or not, on your doctor conversation, on the decision where you go with your disease, and so on. This is funny because all the regulated healthcare industry says, no, this is not our, this. We, we are regulated, we are under control, right? We, we control this stuff. But in fact, you see, unfortunately, only here the germ results that there's a variety of impacts where uh, uh, online usage has an impact on the patient behavior, on his own medication, which doctor he goes, which hospital he goes, and so on. I think I have this dynamic written, um, let me see. Ja, second point in German, Aufweichung von Alleinstellungsmarkung und Expertentum, it's the disruptive attack of expert people. Very, very funny example. The monks in Germany, the Catholic monks in Germany in the 15th century, you know how they reacted on the Gutenberg printing press? This is goddamn stuff from hell. Don't do it. You spoil your soul if you take a book into your hands. Why? Because all the monks were the only ones who could read. Sure. Book in innovation attacked their unique selling position. Uh, 500 years later, Microsoft managers said against open source and Linux, this is communistic bullshit. Innovation changed the USP of a company. And now doctors say healthcare online stuff is qualitative crap. So you see the parallels, right? It's um, funny. Let's go back. And again, technical innovation, social impact. Yeah? Uh, here we have uh, the average age of these uh, so-called e-patients, people surfing online, average age 59.8, with a uh, abbreviation variety of 15 years, so 15 years, 60 plus 15 is 75. We see that age is not a change variable of using online healthcare or not, it's unfortunately education. Uh, I think you should know this, that a 70-year-old academic, a retired academic, 70 years old, can use Google smarter and more efficient than a 17-year-old ground uh, basic school pupil. Hmm. It's not age. Um, okay. There's a new science called e-patient research, so medical internet research. It's more social science, media science, IT and medical science. Mostly evolving in North America, North Europe, and Benelux countries. Small, fast countries, France, Germany, slow, fat, tanker. And if you sum up these innovations, you see that what I said at the beginning, patients online. The same patients with the same problems, with the same world view, with the same context, with the same questions. They trust each other and they help each other very, very much. The healthcare industry thinks they talk about bad pills, bad health insurances, bad doctors. No, totally 100% misunderstanding. They talk about Emotional everyday life problems when you have a uh, künstliche Darmausgang, uh, artificial stoma, and what makes this problems in the subway, in the work, in the working place, and in the bathing, uh, in, a, in, a, in a swimming pool. Practical problems, and not teasing doctors or pills. 
there's a misunderstanding. Uh, this science shows it pretty much. And if you read it, it's digital network uh, dynamics. It's social digital network dynamics. What also is pretty interesting for health insurances and hospitals is how these innovations, these crazy Web 2.0, yeah, Web 2.0, Web 2.0 innovations um, translate innovations in, in healthcare. Uh, you know, maybe Apotheken Umschau uh, online, patient forums online, Net Doctor on Meda, Yameda are big uh, online forums for healthcare. This is the, the first half, and the, the, the last years are coming very, very new insights, also social science, basic, evidence-based proven, that if you give a chronic patient a special app, a special e-learning tool that, mets, that meets his needs, that meets his readability, then it has an impact, then he can cope better his disease, then he manages better his medications, better outcome means higher chance of healing, health insurance is luckier because a diabetes patient doesn't cost 40,000 euros a year but maybe only 20,000, and you are lucky because your health insurance decreases maybe. Now you see the dynamic. Huh? So very interesting. For example, the green arrow is called information therapy, pretty funny. Information therapy is called as the right information to the right patient at the right time. Uh, software can do this pretty good. So one brochure for six million asthma patients is bullshit. But if you have a server with 5,000 short videos, and each video knows what patients at what situation with what problems wants what kinds of video, nice. Yeah. Then you have the quality of relevance. And this app is not a um, Leiche. It's not a... Uh, dead thing on your smartphone or the patient. Yeah. It will be used. Yeah. Another thing of innovation and digital innovation meets old traditional um, industries, mostly won by man 60 plus. Also from Clay Shirky in his book Cognitive Surplus. I love this book. Should be a standard. We come and ask people running traditional systems to evaluate a new technology for its radical benefits. People committed to keeping the system alive will tend as a group to have trouble seeing value in anything disruptive. Monks, Microsoft managers, doctors. You know, the parallel. So summing it up, you have right now two parallel healthcare worlds, sort of two parallel uh, um, healthcare planets. You have the traditional healthcare society, healthcare world, healthcare system with uh, health insurances, paying doctors, pills, surgeries, nurses, physical therapists. And you have these 40 million Germans surfing on the net with all these dynamics. These worlds are not connected. No. Uh, maybe uh, the last uh, two slides, last two minutes. Um, Last week, or earlier this week, was a uh, World Health Summit, a big pharma medical society charity-sponsored uh, healthcare conference with big international people, ministers were talking. No patient, no innovation, no web innovation was the topic. Totally not. And um, imagine if one, two, three, five thousand patients have some application on their smartphone, and the smartphone and the software learns what helps patients best. Is it the pizza? Is it the asthma spray? Is it swimming? Is it going only to bed? Is it a special diet? This is independent, cheap research to improve medical treatment or uh, therapy in general. So you can copy-paste the Wikipedia wisdom of the crowd phenomenon into conservative medical research. And this is already evidence-based, fun stuff old meets new. Yeah. So this is one, one example to connect these two worlds. Uh, in Germany we have about, I don't know, 120 health insurances. Yeah. The one wants the insurance people of the other fighting each other, yeah. which has the better brochure, which has the better website. In, Never um, in uh, England, in um, Great Britain, you have only one health insurance with some weaknesses. But one health insurance can push pretty much innovation. For example, they did a pilot where doctors 
So the patients prescribe not only the prescription, go to the pharmacy, take this medication. They also gave them parallelly a nice e-learning tool right for this pill, right for this disease. Two worlds coming together. Why not? And more and more you see that these connections can improve patients dealing with their problems. This is a, uh, a medtech company uh, producing uh, künstliche Darmausgänge, stoma, plastic bags, where temporarily, for a couple of weeks and months, uh, patients have to digest their uh, toilet stuff in a plastic bag. And not pretty funny. And they ask their patients to say, how can we innovate our products? Because you guys are the really innovative people who have the real problems in everyday life, in the subway, in the swimming pool, at home, in the kitchen, at the working place, how we can improve this plastic bag where you put your poo in. Sorry to say, that's the reality. And it was very successful. It's like, like a Wikipedia on a medical device. Patients uh, cleaned marmalade, mar jar and marmalade glasses, putting, putting plastic on it, making photos, saying this is the spot that could be improved. Or you can call it open innovation or iterative design thinking, whatever. Could, what is success? Just as an idea. Yeah. Uh, this is something we said already. Imagine patients, people having, uh, having a surgery, uh, a hip, hip, uh, hip prothesis after surgery at the Charité Hospital or taking medication. And uh, the hospital and the pharma industry or health insurance uses anonymized there are very much strict laws, anonymized feedback how to improve um, services. Yeah? The, free consumer healthcare industry, the free consumer industry is doing this already. So that means a medication, a therapy, and web-based tools tailored to the patient. That is the innovation that slowly comes, especially also in, already in, in North Europe, Scandinavia, Netherlands. Netherlands is very advanced. They take it really relaxed, and they don't kill this innovation with the all-time data protection argument. This is maybe a German 20th century problem, really. Um, and this is a slide we, talk, we talked about uh, with uh, medtech and pharma companies. They have this innovation funnel. They, search, they, are, they do research for 20 years on one substance, maybe healing cancer, which is okay. Very good, helping millions of people, hopefully, with a special price, but thinking only of this substance or medtech innovation funnel, you can copy paste these digital real world use case, digital use case innovations and copy paste these things together. So on the lower side you see um, maybe what kind of app, what kind of e-learning program can help a diabetes patient in the North German village to cope with his or her um, um, disease. Yeah? And then you put a product together. You put a conservative therapy, a uh, prescription, a surgery, or an inhaler, or medication together with a web-based e service, and then you get a nice package. So this is roughly the future, and Germany is about five to seven years behind. And talking about marketing, uh, health insurance do marketing, pharma companies do marketing to doctors, sometimes public health stuff to patients. Ministry of Health around here is doing uh, also marketing, public health. Mach's uh, mit can dein limit. You know these uh, don't drink sex, drugs, rock and roll stuff. Be cool, be politically correct. Um, this is just uh, fire and forget marketing. We call this fire and forget marketing. You do a brochure, an agency is lucky, and uh, then they do a senseless uh, out of door, out of home uh, poster advertising. The future is more doing a relevant co-creation. I think you heard, had this word of co-creation, you know it already, that you do a, a web tool together with patients, together with people like you or sick people or your parents to make something really useful. And that is not marketing, fire and forget. Press agencies doing some stuff. That's doing step by step slowly. Yeah. That's what I, what I meant with this uh, 
Hasso Plattner School of Design Thinking, you know, Hasso Plattner School of Design, design Thinking, this design thinking approach or this, this service design approach where you have an idea, uh, you, you check the real world, you make, an, you make a try, you make a test, uh, you make a better version, you test it, you make feedback, and so it gets a nice product. Yeah. That's uh, the future. I think we stop here. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.